how to live by God's manifest power and might. We are chapter 8. We have chapter 8. It's the last chapter before the summary and conclusion of this awesome book that we've been reading. How to, man how to live by God's manifest power and might. Um, so let's, since I've already been doing a couple chapters already, I'm already prayed up. So um, I'm going to pray. Pray real quick, and uh, actually, I, I will pray. Right? There's nothing wrong with praying. We got to pray. I mean, that's what we've been reading about, anyways. So, Father, I just thank you, God, for another chapter. I'm thankful. I'm grateful for your word. I'm grateful for your teaching. I'm grateful for um, my brothers and sisters in the Lord that um, encourage me and um, help me to become all I can be in Christ. For your word says that iron sharpens iron. So I pray that um, that you would use me to to um, be a vessel to teach this next, this last chapter uh, with power and might and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, uh, the results of power and might. It says, now that we have thoroughly studied power and might, we must conclude our study by looking at the scriptures which reveal... Um, <laughs> the results of the release of manifest power and might force. This result, the, these results will come forth as the believer is living by the power of God resident within him and having it actively operating in life so that the power of God is manifest with mighty force. As these results are listed, we will see scriptures which verify each point. Number one, salvation. Babe, where's my pen? Huh? Can you give me my pen, please? Uh, the, the result is spoken of in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Here we see that as the gospel goes forth through the word of God, it is the power of God Thank you. As it is put into operation, it will produce the salvation of the Lord, which includes healing, deliverance, safety, pres preservation, and victory. Number two, abound in hope. Romans chapter 15, verse um, 4 and verse 13 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We see in verse 4 that the scriptures produce hope in a believer. Through the word producing hope in him, the God of hope will fill him with joy and peace in believing it. The result is that he will abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, which will be manifest through the word. Manifestation, number three, manifestation of the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 19 and 20 read, But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Verse 20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Here, Paul said that when we, there, or here Paul said that when he would come to them, he wanted to know of the power of God in operation for the kingdom of God is in power. Thus, the power of God in operation shows forth the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Number four, manifest power for spiritual warfare through your life. We see this result in Joshua 14, chapter 14, verse 11. As yet, as, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, both to go out and to come in. Caleb here declares that he is as strong this day as the day Moses sent him out. He goes on to say that his strength for war is also the same. 
Both words strength are the same Hebrew word koach, which means manifest power. Therefore, he had manifest power for war when he was young, excuse me, as well as <clears throat> when he was old. This reveals that the believer in Christ should have manifest power for his for spiritual warfare throughout his life, even when he is old. Number five. Go in the manifest power of God, actively operating through you to deliver others. Look at Judges chapter 6, verse 14 to confirm this truth. It reads, And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the band of the Midianites. Have not I seen have not I sent thee? The word might is koach, which means manifest power. Gideon was commanded by God to go in the manifest power of God and deliver Israel from the Midianites. He added, have not I seen thee or have not I sent thee? Today in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ was sent all believers to go preach and gospel okay, and do the mighty works of the Lord. Thus, this is a revelation that the Lord has sent all believers to go forth in the manifest power of God to save, heal, and deliver others from the hand of their enemies, the devil and his evil spirits. Thus, believers will go in the manifest power of God and do the mighty works of the Lord. Number six. Ooh, it's a good one. Casting out devils and healing the sick. Amen. Luke 9, 1 says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power, and authority over all devils, and to cure diseases. Acts 10.38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who sent about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. In Luke 9, Jesus gave the disciples power, dunamis, and authority over all devils and disease. So that's us too. We have authority over all devils and disease as Christians. We should. We're walking in his ways. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, dunamis, and went forth and healed all that were oppressed of the devil. The manifestation of the authority and power of God will bring forth deliverance as devils are cast out and the healing of all diseases. Number seven, great wonders and miracles. Acts chapter 6, verse 8 says, And Steve, Stephen, full of faith and power, dunamis, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen, who was full of faith and power because he did the scriptural principles to be full of faith and power through the word of God, abiding in him, did great works and miracles. As believers get full of faith and power, they will also do great wonders and miracles. Number 8. No enemy shall have power to withstand you. We see this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 6 says, And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? In this verse, the word power is koach, which means manifest power in the word. Might is giburah, which means mighty force. Here it speaks of manifest power and mighty force in the hand of the Lord. The result of the manifest power and mighty force is that none is able to withstand the Lord. In the New Testament, the believer is to have the power of God resident within him and manifesting the power of God out of him with mighty force. The revelation here is that as the power of God is manifest out of the believer with mighty force, no enemy shall be able to withstand the believer in Christ. Number nine, mighty force will thunder in the spirit against the devil and his evil spirits. This is confirmed in Job chapter 26, verse 14. It says, but the thunder of his power, who can understand? The word power is Geberah, meaning mighty force. This reveals that the release of God's mighty force will thunder in the spiritual realm against the devil and his evil spirits. As the believer in Christ releases the manifest power of God with mighty force, there will be a spiritual thunder 
released in the spiritual realm against the enemy. Number 10. Saved by the mighty force of his right hand. Look at Psalms 20, verse 6. Um, now, now, now know I that the Lord saved his anointed. He will hear from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. This verse declares that the Lord saves his anointed. His anointed today are all Christians as they are anointed through the Spirit of Christ, the Anointed One at the new birth. The word strength is the Hebrew word giburah, which means mighty force. As Christians pray the Word of God, He will hear from heaven, and the saying and the saving mighty force of His right hand will be released to bring forth His salvation, deliverance, healing, prosperity, and victory. Number 11, all things for life and godliness given to us. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given us unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the, the knowledge of him. Through knowledge of God's word in use, we have the power dunamis of God resident in us. And as it is put into active operation, it will manifest all things for life and godliness. Number 12, dynamic witness for the Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. So that's what the whole, that's what the Holy Ghost, his job is, is to make us witnesses. Uh, so, if you're not being a witness, then you're not allowing the Holy Ghost to use you. You need to let the Holy Ghost use you to be a witness to others, to our family, our family first, and then to others, you know, around us. A lot of times, a lot of times our, um, our, our lives, the way we lead our lives, uh, sometimes, I mean, it's really good to preach the gospel. Sure, it's great, but. A lot of times people don't want to hear the gospel, especially people that don't believe in God or Jesus or whatever. And they're going to be like, you know, like miss me with that. You know, like, I don't want to hear that, whatever. Don't talk to me about God. Um, but our lives are, our lives are the number one witness and testimony that we could give to other people. So if we're living a life unto God, other people around us are going to see that. And they're going to, they're going to wonder how come we're being so pro, how come God is blessed? How come, how come we're getting so many blessings? How come our life looks like, like like the life that normally anybody would want, you know, is is the life that God would give us, which is the blessings of God, you know. So, uh, let's see here. This is a highly uh, misunderstood scripture. Many have taught that after the Holy Spirit comes into a believer, he now has the power of God in him to be a dynamic witness for the Lord. If that was true, all believers who have received the Holy Spirit should be dynamic witnesses manifesting the power of God with mighty force and doing great works for him. However, that is not happening. Why? It's because of a misunderstanding of this verse. First, the word power is dunamis, which means power. The word receive is very important to understand. There are two main Greek words for receive. One of those Greek words is dechomai, D-E-C-H-O-M-A-I, which means a ready reception of what is offered to a person or a passive reception. The other Greek word is lambano, which means a self-prompted taking hold of or an active reception. Most Christians, most Christian teachers have taught that after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you have received power. In other words, power came to you passively from the Holy Spirit after he came upon you and now is dwelling in you. That is incorrect. There are two points which must be addressed. The first is that the Greek word for receive here is lumbano, which means an active reception or an active taking hold of the power of God. The second point is that the verb shall receive is in the future tense. This means that after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall, in the future, actively take hold of and actively receive 
the power of God. Notice what this verse does, doesn't say. It doesn't say you have received power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Instead, it says you shall receive. This means that the order of the things occurring in this verse is that first the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then secondly, you shall future tense, actively take hold of the power. Dunamis. Therefore, the Holy Spirit coming upon you did not bring the power of God into you. Instead, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, then the next thing you do is to actively take hold of the power of God so that you can be witnesses. How does one take hold of an actively How does one take hold of and re actively receive the power of God? It is through the word of God. What does the Holy Spirit have to do with the power of God in you? Question mark. The Holy Spirit reveals the word of God to a person and writes it in their heart. Again, let me say that. The Holy Spirit reveals the word of God to a person and writes it in the heart and mind so that the power of God is resident within a person through the word abiding in him. Therefore, after the Holy Spirit has come into us, believers are to actively take hold of the power of God through the word written in their heart and mind by means of the Holy Spirit revealing it to them as well as writing it within them. Now, once the power of God is residing within the person through the word of God, then that person can be a dynamic witness for the Lord to manifest power and mighty force to see others be born again receive the Holy Spirit, um, be delivered of evil spirits as they are cast out and be healed as and be healed as healing power is ministered to others. Thus through the power of God the believer will be a mighty witness for the Lord. <clears throat> 13 pulling down strongholds. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds. In this verse, the word mighty is the Greek word uh, dunatos, D-U-N-A-T-O-S, which means powerful. The words through God is in the dative case in the Greek and would be translated to God. The word translated to is the Greek pre preposition Pros, P-R-O-S, which means for, for or for the purpose of, the noun pulling down is in the accusative case. <clears throat> the word pulling down is the Greek word kat, <laughs> katharesis, K-A-T-H-A-I-R-E-S-I-S, -I -I -E which actually means destruction. The word strongholds is the Greek word ochura, ochuroma, ochuroma which means fortress. Thus, this verse is literally saying, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but are powerful to, to God for the purpose of the destruction of strongholds or fortresses, or fortresses. Believers in Christ have been given spiritual weapons of warfare to engage in spiritual war against the adversary who is the devil. These weapons are not carnal or of the flesh. They are spiritual weapons that are powerful to God for the purpose of the destruction of satanic strongholds and fortresses. Uh, in the next context, it is talking about destroying strongholds in the mind through casting down mental reasonings and bringing ca into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 5. However, our spiritual weapons are powerful to God for the destruction of satanic strongholds or fortresses in any area of life thus the believer in christ must know his spiritual weapons of the word of god which will manifest power and might mighty force to the to the destruction of any satanic stronghold or fortress fortress in one's life number 14 having power to stand against the wiles of the devil ephesians 6 11 says put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil we previously discussed how we put on the whole armor of God through the word of God residing within us so that we have the power of God resident within us. 
The result of putting on the armor, the whole armor of God is that believers will have power. Able is the Greek word dunamis, meaning power to stand against the wiles, deceitful tricks and strategies of the devil. One will be able to stand against the spiritual wiles of the devil unless, or one will not be able to stand against the spiritual wiles of the devil unless he has the power of God in operation in his life. You look pretty, babe. <laughs> I, look, I look good. Sorry, guys. My, my beautiful wife just walked in the room. Um, <laughs> see, the, through the word of God dwelling in him and putting into operation in his life, the power of God will be manifest against the enemy. Therefore, as one puts the power of God into operation in his life, he will be able to stand victorious against Satan's strategies. Number 15, have power to keep you from falling and uh, have power to keep you from falling and present you faultless before God. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present your, your faultless and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Here the word able is dunamai, which means powerful. God is the only one who is powerful. The way he manifests his power is in one's life is through the word of God. As the word of God is residing within a person, God's power is resident within the person. As one applies, as one applies the word in his life, it is God's power at work in him. Through hearing and doing God's words, God's word in all areas of life, the power of God will be actively in operation to keep a believer from falling so that he is presented faultless before the presence of God. Number 16, guarded through faith unto salvation. 1 Peter 1, 5 says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. In verse 5, the word kept is the Greek word uh, P-H-R-O-U-R-E-O, -E which means guard or to be protected by a military guard. Thus, the power of God put into active operation through one's faith brings forth salvation. His salvation will be manifest through the power of God guarding a believer against the attacks of the devil. Uh, sorry, somebody's calling me. Um, I'm sorry, whoever's watching this on Facebook, Rafa, brother Rafa, uh, I gotta, I gotta go real quick. I gotta come right back. Give me a couple minutes. It's gonna be just dead, dead time on here, but I'll be right back.
Praise God. All right. Um, okay, where are we? Oh, so uh, number 17 is have power to exhort and bring uh, convicting proof to those opposed to the word of God. It says having power to exhort and bring convicting proof to those opposed to the word of God. Uh, Titus 1 9 says holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught and that that he may be able to by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the naysayers. The word able is the Greek word uh, dunatos, which means powerful. The word convince is the Greek word electro, which means bringing conviction proof, convicting proof, disprove, set right and correct, expose and put to shame. The word uh, gainsayers is the Greek word antiligo, which means those who put against, contradict, and oppose. As a believer is thoroughly taught the word of God, he will have sound doctrine established within him. Through the word in him, he will have the power of God to exhort and bring convicting proof, disprove, set right and correct, and expose and put to shame those who speak against, contradict, and oppose the truth. Um, number 18, save, heal, deliver, and preserve your soul. James 1 verse 21 says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Um, let's see here, save your souls. The word able is the Greek word dunamai, which means power. The word engrafted is the Greek word E-M-P-H-U-T-O-S, which means implanted. The word save is the Greek word sozo, which means save, heal, preserve, and deliver. The soul is made up of the will, intellect, and emotions. Thus, as one receives the word of God implanted within him, the word has the power to save, heal, preserve, and deliver the will, intellect, and emotions in the soul. Number 19. Build up, build you up and give you your inheritance. Acts 20 verse 32 says, To the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are san sanctified. Again, the word able is the Greek word dunamai, which means power. Uh, thus, the word has the power of God in it to build you up and give you your inheritance, the promises of God. Number 20, length of days in your life. This promise is in Psalms chapter 90, verse 10. It says, the days of our, of our years are three score years and 10. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years. Okay. The word strength is the Hebrew word gebura, which means mighty force when you have mighty force you will be able to conquer the enemy and possess length of days in your life today in new testament the days of man are 120 thus as the believer in christ has mighty force to defeat the enemy in their life they will be blessed with length of days amen 21, Satan and evil spirits cast out of the heavenlies. This will occur in the future in Revelations chapter 12, verse 7 through 8. It reads, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. These verses describe what will happen in the end before Jesus returns to the earth. There will be spiritual war between Michael, the archangel of God, and leader of the warrior angels, and his angels against the devil, the dragon, and his angels. The verse eight, in verse 8, the word prevailed is Ishuel, which means mighty force. Thus, the word declares that Satan and his angels will not have mighty force, 
to prevail against Michael and the angels of God. God's mighty force will prevail over the devil. The result of this war is that the devil and his angels will be cast out into the earth and will no longer be in the heavenlies. 22. The angels of God will minister for those who are heirs of salvation with great power and mighty force. Amen. Look at the following scriptures in Hebrews, Psalms, 2 Peter, and Revelation. Hebrews 1.14 says, And they are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Uh, 2 Peter 2.11 says, whereas angels which are greater in power and might. Revelation 5 verse 2 says, and I saw a strong angel. Revelation 10 uh, verse 1 says, and I saw another mighty angel. Revelation 18 verse 21 says, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea. In Hebrews 1 14, it declares that angels Minister for those who are the heirs of salvation. The heirs of salvation are born again believers in Jesus Christ. Thus, God's angels have been sent forth to minister for believers to bring their salvation into manifestation. In Psalms 103 verse 20, it states that the angels do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. It also says they excel in strength. The Hebrew word for excel is gibor. Strong's number 1368, which is a form of Geborah, Strong's 1369, which means mighty force. The word strength is the Hebrew word koach, which we have seen many times before meaning manifest power. Thus, this scripture declares that God declares that angels are mighty in power and have mighty force in manifesting power. In 2 Peter 2.11, the word power is Ishus, Strong's 2.4.7.9, which means mighty force. The word might is dunamis, Strong's 1.4.1.1, which means power. This verse indicates that angels are greater in mighty force and in power. In Revelation 5, chapter 5, verse 2, Revelation 10, verse 1, and Revelation 18, verse 21, the same Greek word Ishros, Strong's 2478, which is a form of Ish, Ishus, is translated strong, Revelation 5 2, and mighty, Revelation 10 1 and 18 21. Thus, we see that God's angels are mighty and forceful, who will manifest great power in ministering for those who are heirs of salvation as they do his commandments and speak forth his word. 23. Spiritually strong, even stronger than your enemies. In Joel 2.11, Psalms 105 verse 24, and Exodus 1 verse 7, we see this result from having power and might. Joel 2.11 says, And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. Psalms 105, 24 says, And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Exodus 1, 7 says, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, mighty, mighty. As believers hear and do the word of God, the power of God is resident within them. Another result of hearing and doing the word is, is fruitfulness. In Joel chapter 2 verse 11, the word strong is a different Hebrew word than what we have studied thus far. This Hebrew word is A-T-S-U-W-M, Strong's number 6099, which often means strong or mighty. Thus, Joel 2 verse 11 tells us that one is strong and mighty who executes or does his word. The result of doing his word is fruitfulness. 
in Psalms 105, 24, the word increased is the Hebrew word para, which means fruitful. The word stronger is A-T-S-A-M, Strong's number 6105, which is the root word of A-T-S-U-W-M, which and means strong or, or mighty. Thus, as the people were exceedingly fruitful, it made them stronger and mightier than their enemies. Thus, we see in Exodus 1, chapter, verse 7, that the children of Israel were fruitful, then increased abundantly, then multiplied, and then were exceeding mighty. mighty. The word mighty is again A-T-S-A-M. Thus, we see that fruitfulness, increase, and multiplication, which comes from growing and increasing in the Word of God, produces people who are exceedingly strong and mighty. Therefore, as believers hear and do the Word of God, bringing forth great fruitfulness, they shall be strong and mighty, spiritually and even stronger and mightier than their enemies. In summary of this chapter, we see the results of power and might listed below. Number one, salvation. Number two, abound in hope. Number three, manifestation of the kingdom of God. Number four, manifest power for spiritual warfare throughout your life. Number five, go in, go in the manifest power of God, actively operating through you to save, heal, and deliver others. Casting Six, casting out devils and healing the sick. Seven, great wonders and miracles. Eight, no enemy shall have power to withstand you. Nine, mighty force will thunder in the spirit against the devil and his evil spirits. Ten, you will be saved by the mighty force of his right hand. Eleven, all things for life and godliness given to us. Twelve, dynamic witness for the Lord. Thirteen, pulling down strongholds. Fourteen, having power to stand against the wiles of the devil. Fifteen, having power to keep you from falling and present you as faultless before God. 18. Save, heal, deliver, and preserve your soul. 19. Build you up and give you your inheritance. 20. Length of days in your life. 21. Satan and evil spirits cast out of the heavenlies. 22. The angels of God will minister for those who are heirs of salvation with great power and mighty force. 23. Is spiritually strong even stronger than your enemies. Now we will proceed to the summary of what we have learned in this book. And I'm gonna I'm gonna actually read that on a different video. I'm gonna do that on a different video. Alright, so that's it for chapter eight. Thank you for watching. Have a good day or night or morning. <laughs>